Ναι.
Yeah, hi there, good evening, how are you? Good evening, Darren, can you hear me? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm muted, that's why. <laughs> I was talking to myself. Yeah, I'm sorry for today because uh, I told you right, I'm based in Canada. So I was trying to make okay. payment with, uh, but the thing is that with the payment, you can only do a bank transfer, not a credit card or online card. So okay. I will need, to, yeah, so I'm trying to get it sorted with the course administrator. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's why I was like, you know, kind of wondering, I mean, like, you know, where is everyone? So that's why I have to call the uh, academy guy over, uh, over here as well. And by chance, the coordinator is kind of like, you know, was absent today. So I couldn't like, you know, coordinate with him. And secondly, he sent me the invitation for the WhatsApp. And by mistakenly, you can say, or like, you know, basically I have so many rush on the WhatsApp, basically. Mm -hmm. And this whole group, it was like, you know, being, was being very suppressed by the other messages. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering, uh, I, I just opened his message and that like, you know, his invitation to the like, you know, WhatsApp group was expired. So I texted him and then I was kind of like, you know, waiting for his reply. Then I called Mr. Hamza and I asked from him and he said, okay, it's surprising that nobody's online and all that. And then he said, okay, let me check on it. And afterwards I was just like, you know, going through the WhatsApp and I finally happened to see the WhatsApp group basically, which is being created for us. Mm -hmm. So I just dropped the message in that and just like, you know, to get an idea that why everyone is not kind of like you know present today but anyhow uh so i won't recommend like you know dropping the class and all this like you know if i talk about this but uh mm -hmm. anyhow uh we were talking about the accounting question last time as far as i remember and the accounting question was assets is equal to capital plus liabilities and where you have to solve the exercise. What's the status of that? Have you been able to solve it? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> I be able to do <laughs> because actually I was thinking today I, I would miss the class because uh, right now uh, I told you, right? Because of the time zone difference, I'm having, um, I'm working at the same time because I'm working from home today. That's why <laughs> uh, I, I was more relying on the recorded class for until we get sorted for like, uh, like a suitable schedule okay, between okay, what okay. I have here and Mauritius, that's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But, but, but you had a whole week. You, you had a whole week and you should have done that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I only done if you are to take out the time. Then you will be able to perform the paper. This, this is what, like, you know, the, the truth, reality, basically, you have to. I think it's okay. We'll start from the uh, new topic and uh, we can discuss that as well. And okay. uh, new topic, if I talk about that is basically double entry, bookkeeping system. Talking about the double entry, basically double entry is the way of recording transaction in the books of accounts. The way of recording into the recording the transactions as far as the accounts are concerned and uh, the whole thing is concerned. Internet is not good, my status is red. Yeah, it's it's breaking actually. Uh, are, right now it's you, right now it's good. Are you then, able to hear properly? Uh, yeah, right now it's okay. like uh, intermittent, you know, like on and off. Okay, but the thing is, if somehow some way you feel that my voice is breaking or something, straight away unmute yourself or straight away okay, drop sure. me a text. Okay, mm -hmm. onto the chat. Just let me know if if there's some uh, like you know connection issue or something. Okay, sure, thanks. Okay, talking about the double entry. The rule for. Double entry. We have outcome of 
transactions. Then we have increase, we have decrease. I mean, talking about the outcome of the transactions, this is something that you know we have seen so far that uh, any transaction, if we talk about, it is going to have the outcomes be named as the asset expense income liability and then capital these are the five outcomes if you see and if we talk about these are the five outcomes of the transactions now after every transaction if there is any asset expense income liability or capital is created or is affected by the transaction the effect is going to be in the form of any of the these two which are written in front of you that is one is increase and one is decrease i mean at the end of every transaction either it is involving the asset expense income liability or capital any five of these which has been involved into the transaction either it is going to increase or either it is going to decrease third is there is not going to be any effect on it right if there is no effect on the trans uh, uh, on the if there is no effect on the like you know outcome of the transaction then obviously there is no like you know point of recording uh, like you know that particular outcome because if there is no effect on the transaction uh, because of the transaction or to an outcome of a transaction we are not going to record it as well so now either because of a transaction our assets are going to increase or our assets are going to decrease now this is the rule which i'm writing now that whenever there is an increase of asset we are going to debit it and whenever there is a decrease of asset we are going to credit it now debit and credit are the two halves of the double entry system these are the two halves of the double entry system this is how basically we basically record or we basically like you know put in the recording as far as the accounts are concerned. So debit and credit, they are the two half of the double entry system. And uh, talking about the debit and credit, if there is a transaction because of which an asset is increased or asset is decreased, if the asset is increased, it is going to debit. And if the asset decreases, it is going to be credited. Then talking about the expense, if there is an increase of expense, this is going to debit. If there is a decrease of expense, this is going to be credit. As far as the income liability and credit, uh, income liability and capital are concerned, whenever they are increased, they are credited, and whenever they are decreased, they are debited. Done. So this is the uh, rule which we have just talked about. This is the rule of as far as like you know doing the debit and credit is concerned. Now, how to record the entry now how to record the entry how are we supposed to record the end how, how are we supposed to record into the accounts or how are we supposed to record the double entry for this what do we have to do let's just take up a transaction for example like for example mr a started business with ten thousand dollars mr a started business with ten thousand dollars now this is a transaction this is a transaction and this transaction has two outcomes this transaction has two outcomes one is this is cash cash is asset asset has been created into the business second one this is the investment by the owner of business called as capital now mr a has started the business right this is the transaction now this ten thousand is obviously cash cash is an asset obviously an asset has been created into the business and then at the same time this is the amount by which the business has started right so the amount by which the business has started is called as the capital right now talking about this as far as the double entry is concerned, we should debit our cash over here with 10,000 and then we should credit our 
capital with 10,000 here. Why? Why we debit the cash over here? Because if you look at this transaction, the asset 10,000 cash has been created in the business for the very first time. We are starting off a business now. So we are starting the business with the cash. Before today, there was no cash into the uh, business or something. So then technically speaking, this is the new asset which is created for the business. So there is an increase in the asset. So this is going to be debit. Then on the other hand, the amount with which the business is started by the owner is called as capital. Technically speaking, if we today have started the business, obviously the amount invested by the owner is going to be called as the capital. So the capital is going to be credited over here with 10,000. So mm -hmm. the double entry is we are going to debit the cash with 10,000 and then we are going to credit the capital with 10,000. Now, how to record? Mm -hmm. The rule for recording is normally we don't write the debit and credit with the double entries. There's a simple rule of writing it and that is in the upper line, you are going to record cash 10,000. Then in the lower line, you are going to push a tab and then this tab is going way ahead. We are going to come over here and we are going to write capital 10,000. This is how the debit entry is recorded in the upper line. The credit entry is recorded in the lower line or the line next. And it is recorded with a bit of a space from the left side. A bit of a space is given from the left side and then it is recorded. And then how to uh, like you know, read the double entry. It is read as cash ten thousand to capital ten thousand. Now let me adjust it. This is how it is read. As far as reading a double entry is concerned, it is read as cash to capital. This TO2 is only used to, uh, is only used as far as like, you know, when speaking of the double entry is concerned, when telling about the double entry is concerned, say in case, uh, like, you know, in the coming classes, if I ask you about a double entry, then you are going to pronounce or you are going to say the double entry as, like, you know, the debit half or the debit entry, whatever you want to do you will say it first then you will say two and then you will say the credit entry this is how basically the double entry is said or this is how basically like you know we pass the double entry we don't mention what is debit what is credit we just simply go on with writing the double entry the debit entry in the top and then the credit entry in the lower line and the credit entry is normally written with a space being left onto the left side this is how basically it is recorded Mm -hmm. So, is capital a liability? No, capital is not a liability. Capital is the investment by the owner into the business. This is totally separate from the liability. Huh. Some people, just for the make of, like, you know, for the sake of understanding, do say that capital is sort of a liability of the business towards its owners, right? Some people, just for the sake of understanding, do say that capital is sort of a liability of a business towards its owners, right? But this statement is only given for the sake of understanding. I mean, if you are starting the business, huh? from the business point of view, from the business point of view, the business and the owners, they are two separate entities, the business and the owners. They are two separate entities. For example, if you talk about uh, uh, like, you know, any grocery store or something, if you talk about a grocery store and if you happen to see the bills which the grocery store receives, the bills are on the name of the grocery stores. For example, if it's a cash and carry or something, if it's a mart or something, like for example, if you have an eBay over there, not the eBay, but you have the Best Buy store over there, if you have uh, like, you know, other big stores over there or something, those businesses are run by their names. They are individually identified. They're not identified by their owners, right? 
So technically, when you start a business, you being the owner kind of give the money to the business to run itself. I mean, just for the sake of example, I'm trying to explain it to you. Just for the sake of running the business, this is the business. You give the money to the business, right? And the business takes the money and it starts running itself. Although you are the one who is pushing and who is running the business, right? But the business and the owners, they are two separate ones. So technically the money which you have given to the business is technically its liability towards you because it has to repay you in the form of the profits in the form of the returns, right? So that's why we can somehow, some way, for the sake of explanation and all, we can call the capital as a liability towards the owner, right? That is the liability of the business towards the owners, okay? So moving ahead from here, let's just take another example. Uh, electricity bill of 1,000 paid by cash. You have just paid an electricity bill of 1,000, right? Now, in order to pass the double entry, in order to pass the double entry, it is always necessary to understand what has happened into the transaction, right? You can have multiple transactions in front of you, but before doing the double entry, all you have to do is you have to understand that what has been done in the double, uh, in the transaction or what event has occurred in the transaction right now for example if you look at this transaction that the electricity bill of 1000 paid by cash you have to understand that what has happened over here technically when we read the line again we come to understand that we have paid an electricity bill of $1000 right and the payment has been made by cash now what happens when you pay the electricity bill. For example, if you talk about the bill, like, you know, you are earning as well. So technically you are familiar with this concept as well. Like, you know, whenever we get the huge bills and at the end of the day, when we have to pay the bills, what is the first thing which we kind of say to ourselves? What's the first thing after paying the bills? What, what's the first thing that comes into our mind or what comes into our mind? And what's the thing that we think? We always think, okay, I have like, you know, so many, I have spent so many in the name of the expenses or I have spent so much this month. They are the expenses, right? So what the, what's the first thing which comes into your mind? you name them as expenses, right? So technically you happen to incur the expense, right? If I look over here into this transaction, what has happened? One, the electricity expense has been created. And then secondly, what has been created over here as well that we have paid off that expense and we have paid by, uh, we have paid the expense by cash. So, when we pay the expense with the cash, what will happen? The cash balance in our business will drop, right? The cash balance in our business will drop. Cash is an asset. Asset is going to decrease. So when the asset is decreased, it is credited. And when the expense is increased, it is debited. So what is going to be the double entry? The double entry is going to be electricity bill debit and cash credit. Why? Because electricity bill is debited because of increase in expense and cash is credited because of decrease in asset. This is the double entry that now you are going to pass. Is it clear to you? Yes. Okay. Now moving ahead from here. Moving ahead from here, let me just open the notes so that we can formally start an exercise where we are going to have multiple transactions over which we can easily do our some handsome practice and Okay, where is F3 here? 
Step two. Okay, meanwhile, when I'm opening the, uh, the notes, one thing I would like to add over here, uh, Darren, the secret, if I talk about myself, let me talk about myself. The secret of success of mine, because of a student has been that I have tried my level best during my whole, like, you know, tenure or my whole career as far as being a student is concerned, not being a like an associate professor or being a teacher is concerned or a coach is concerned. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being a student. The secret of my success has been that I have tried always to be like, you know, present in the class, no matter what I have. If I look back and like, you know, the multiple courses which I've done and the certifications I've done, I can easily say that the maximum of the maximum of is like, you know, kind of one or two per semester, maximum one or two, like, you know, offs per semester. Like, you know, I have so many courses where I never took an off, right? Or I never like, you know, took a day off because uh, honestly speaking, this is maximum, like, you know, kind of the arrangement with us. It is kind of like, you know, off around two and a half hours only. And it is only once a week. Once a week, you have to like, you know, spare two and a half hours for your studies. So this is something my recommendation to you is try not to take off at any day. This is going to help you because even if you told me that you are working at the same time, but believe me, if during working, you are able to spare your five, 10 minutes, and then you are able to focus on the, like, you know, on the studies on what we are doing or what we are discussing in the class, this is literally going to help you a lot. Uh, like, you know, when you are studying alone or when you are studying at home and have nothing to do. And then at that time, if you are trying to study or something, this thing will help you a lot. The first hand knowledge, which you gain from like, you know, while during into the class, this is going to be really, very helpful for you. Anyhow, now we have some practice questions. We are going to do at least these two exercises then we are going to like you know jump towards another new concept and that is related to the ledgers and t accounts we are going to do that as well but for now let's have a look at these practice questions and uh, these are the practice questions related to the double entry i have to open up my excel now as well because i have to do the double entry over there as well I have I have one question. Uh, I think uh, yeah. since I see that we don't have many students in this class, I think it could be arranged, right? The schedule maybe uh, put a time which a class which uh, might be good uh, one that suits the one I'm here and the one for you. Maybe uh, I don't know Saturday morning or something. It can be arranged, right? Uh, this is something which can be put forward as a request to the like you know relevant guys at the academy. This can be put forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. This can be put forward. I can I can talk to I can talk to like you know Sir Hamza as well, and I can talk to the coordinator as well. But again, this is something uh, technically speaking, like the way you had the the payment. Obviously, uh, I just got a text as well from the academy that maybe the other students kind of had the problem as far as like you know doing the payment was concerned. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, this is something I cannot commit in advance. But obviously. Uh, I'm kind of like, you know, I'll be available definitely for sure. Uh, obviously I have to check my slots as well because currently I'm taking the four courses uh, online and uh, with the academy basically. Then again, I have my university over here as well, like, you know, where I'm working in the morning as well. But technically I'm free on Saturdays. Okay, I am free yeah. on Saturdays, but uh, this is something obviously I cannot commit. Yeah. But I can try a level best for the arrangement with if if it can be done or something. I can try okay. for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll I'll put forward I'll, I'll put forward the request. But the thing is as you are into the WhatsApp group yourself, you are into the WhatsApp group. I would suggest you to drop a message into the WhatsApp group regarding the change of the timings, but then you have to be precise about what timing slot do you want. 
Okay. And the homework that you will have to do is you will have to tell about the suitable timings for the class according to the Mauritius time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You will have to you will have to calculate by yourself that what's the time in the Canada and all. And then yeah. you will have to convert it according to the Mauritius one. And then you have to tell or you have to suggest to the uh, into the WhatsApp group regarding the change of the timings. OK. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something uh, we can try. But again, I will not commit. I'm not committing, but this is something which can be look in, looked into. Obviously, we have to check the slots of the other students as well. We have to check the slots of the other teachers as well. If mm -hmm. there is some clash or something, obviously, then it will be kind of a bit difficult. Yeah. But again, mm -hmm. We can look into it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, no problems. You're welcome. Okay, if we have these questions with us, let me copy this from here. And uh, let's just go to Excel. Okay, so we have some transactions over here. And the first one, if you look over here, that is the goods bought on credit from J. Reed. Now, before solving this, I have to do one more thing. And that is, here we go. Now, we have this table. You have this table in front of you. Remember, while practicing and while learning about the double entry, while practicing and while learning about the double entry, you have to think or you have to keep one thing in your mind. And that is, this is the learning phase. This is the learning phase. And in this, what do you have to do is, you have to keep the table right in front of you so that if you are kind of like, you know, doing the double entry or something, you are straight away looking and consulting with the table so that you are gradually getting your grip regarding this main core concept. That is every transaction for which we do the double entry has these basics behind it. Now, for example, if you look at the stuff that goods bought on credit from J. Reed. Now there's a new concept over here. Whenever there is a term being written as the goods, whenever there is a term being written as goods, this is always going to be the case that goods are anything held for resale purposes. Anything held for resale purposes. For example, if you are a Boeing company and you have like, you know, the Boeing 747, uh, like, you know, Airbus A30 or 130, these are going to be called, these can be called by you, you being the Boeing company for who is basically like, you know, selling these like, you know, aircrafts and airplanes or something, you can call them the goods as well, right? You can call them the overall, you can call them the goods as well. These are called as your goods, right? Like if you are buying them, you can call, the, call them the goods. If you are selling them, you can call them the goods. So technically, what are the goods? Anything held for resale purposes, right? And now, obviously the goods, they are our asset, right? Because if we have to sell them, nah, they are our asset. But remember, this is a one very strong line which I'm about to say. We do not pass the double entry of the goods in the accounting. We don't pass the double entry of the goods from the assets point of view into the accounting. We don't do that double entry. But how to record and what to record. Whenever goods are bought, we incur an expense. So the double entry is passed according to the rule of expense. Now, when the goods are sold, we earn income. So the double entry is passed according to the rules of income. Done? Now, look here. 
goods bought on credit from j reed we have bought the goods on credit from j reed now what is going to be the inventory as we have bought the goods we have incurred an expense we have bought the goods we have incurred an expense right so we are going to debit the purchases right we are going to debit the purchases done and now what should be the credit over here it says the goods bought on credit from j reed we have bought the goods from j reed on credit we have bought the goods but we have not paid for it right we have bought the goods but we have not yet paid for the goods so technically if we have not paid it for now we are or we will be paying for it like tomorrow day after tomorrow after a week or maximum after a month or something right we will be paying for it or we will have to pay for it like tomorrow day after tomorrow after a week or after a month so technically speaking if we have bought the goods on credit and we have not paid for it but we have to pay for it at the end of the day we have to pay for it so technically speaking this is going to be our liability right this is going to be our liability because we have to pay right and then technically speaking what is going to be credited over here we are going to credit the j read over here j read is going to be credited over here as a liability so purchases they are recorded over here as a increase in expense and j read is recorded over here as a increase in liability that this is the rule this is the rule that whenever we buy goods on credit whenever we buy goods this is always going to be an expense whenever we buy good being on credit being on cash whenever we buy good it is always going to be our expense right it's always going to be our increase in expense so the purchases are going to be debited and j read in this case is going to be our liability why because we have bought the goods on credit from him and eventually we have to pay him so technically speaking it is our liability that we have to pay so we are going to credit the j read in this case uh, so i have now, a question here yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, you see i was thinking that you say that you bought goods so i was thinking that maybe you you have acquired extra assets right so your assets have increased so why is it not an increase in asset i would have done this is in, the goods the goods are asset i'm not saying anything i i did happen to say as well that the goods they are the assets they are your assets they are the increase in asset i agree but this is the rule that we don't pass the double entry of the resale or the like you know the inventory or the goods we basically don't pass this double entry they basically this is the concept of the ias2 inventory behind it the rule basically there is an accounting standard that we are going to study later and uh, this is the one basically has the rule or logic behind basically that we don't do its double entry right we just simply don't do its double entry we don't like you know mention each and every inventory like this we happen to have its physical count at the end of the day or at the end of the year by which basically we assign the uh, like you know value to it right so this is the rule that we are following although inventory or the goods they are assets whenever the accounts are prepared we do happen to record them on the basis of the asset we do record them on the basis of the asset there's no other doubt but the rule is we don't pass its double entry because these are on the reoccurring like you know process and this is something which the business is doing or business uh, which the business is doing on like you know regular basis and this is something which the business is doing on the rapid like you know Uh, at a very rapid or at a very speedy speed, uh, like you know, speed basically, we don't pass the double entry of the goods from the assets point of view. Rather, we pass it onto the logics of the expense. Because if we are buying it for the resale purposes or something, this is not going to be 
like you know our increase in asset rather this is going to be called as an increase in expense right this is the rule basically we are following mm -hmm. now uh, let's just let's just take these two uh, like you know entries as well and then we can have a better idea as well now the second one is goods sold on credit to bipa kids we have sold goods to bipa kids now on credit what happened now in this transaction we have sold the goods to be package right and we have sold the goods on credit done now what will happen or what has happened over here we have sold the goods and we have to receive the money from the b package because we have sold the goods on the credit so technically speaking b package has not paid us yet but tomorrow day after tomorrow after a week or maximum after one eventually we are going to get the cash from him or we are going to get the money from him right so if tomorrow day after tomorrow or after a week we are going to get the money from him we are going to get the cash from him now what is happening that when it is probable that economic benefit will flow towards the organization it's called an asset right you are probable that eventually tomorrow day after tomorrow or after a week you are going to get the money from the b parkins so b parkins is going to be recorded as your asset because it is probable that you are going to get the money from him right now another like you know interesting question comes in mind sir what if it's not probable that we are going to get the money from him then what it can be a case i mean like you know we we have just sold and now it is kind of like you know getting probable that we are not going to get the money from him then what then technically speaking at the start right at this at this instant i mean like you know before the credit period has been given to the customer and all let's just talk about something logical like for example you are selling some goods or something right i come to you and i ask for the credit right i come to you and i ask the goods for or like you know i want to buy the goods from you on credit right obviously you will not sell me the goods like you know just like a random like this obviously you are going to have some credit checks on me you are going to have some check of references on me as well right this is something you are not going to do the bluntly right so technically when we are doing the credit checks when we are checking the credit rating as well so technically we are making sure that we are going to get the money from such customers right so technically we are ensuring the probability or the probability of receiving the cash from the customer or such customers is concerned right but again it can happen it can happen like you know the customer is uh, like you know kind of facing difficulty as far as the payments is concerned or the customer goes bankrupt or something right there can be instances where like you know such problems might occur might occur but that is something we are going to discuss later for now if we are sold the goods on credit this is uh, more than 75% confirmed that we are going to receive the money we are going to receive the money now what's the dividendry that we are going to record when we have sold the goods on credit we are supposed to get the money from our debtor from our receivable so we are going to debit b parkins over here b parkins is going to be debited over here as a increase in asset and we are going to credit the sales we are going to credit the sales why because this is increase in income when we are going to like you know sale on credit this is going to be our increase in income why because when we sell the goods or when we sold the goods we have earned like you know the economic benefits for ourselves we have earned the economic benefits so the economic benefits which are earned they are called as the income now in point c we have once bought on credit from h thomas we have once bought on credit from h thomas now these are the vans vans means these are the 
non current assets these are not the goods these are the non current assets now as you were thinking about this is an increase in asset or something this can be applied over here or this concept can be applied over here and uh, that is uh, this is the van bots on credit so this is going to be van debit vans debit as they have been bought on credit so we are going to credit the ace thomas because this is again vans are increased in asset because our non current assets have been increased and ace thomas is going to be increase in liability right this is going to be increase in liability so we are going to have the double entry and uh, the double entry is going to be we are vans that is increasing the asset and ace thomas is going to be increase in liability and then we have another point that is good sold a check being received immediately we have sold the goods and immediately we have received the check now we have sold the goods right so technically if we have sold the goods so it means we have made a sale we have made a sale technically it is an increase in income if it's an increase in income so technically this is going to be credited so what should we do we should credit the sales because uh, this sales is increase in income done this is increase in income but what to debit over here talking about what should be debited over here now look here in the previous one in the b we had the name of a customer to whom we had made the sale right so we technically what we did we debited that customer because we were supposed to get the cash from him but now over here we have sold the goods and we have received the check right we have received the check so how about if we write check debit and sales credit uh for the beginners for the beginners we debiting the check and crediting the sales is a bit of a right a bit of a right we can like you know uh, at times we do consider this double entry as being correct but for the beginners let's just check the logic one thing behind what is a check a piece of a paper which we receive from a customer or which we pay to our like you know liabilities or something or to our payables or something and what happens if we have received the check we go to our bank we deposit the check into the bank and then the bank's balance is increased and similarly if we have made a payment to someone that someone goes to his or her bank deposits the check over there and then gets the payment right this is the what's the procedure is basically so technically where is ultimately check going and what balance is the check ultimately increasing or decreasing what's the ultimate balance that is the bank so the bank is an asset so technically this is going to be increase in asset so when we have sold the goods a check being received immediately we are going to debit the bank and then we are going to credit the sales done i hope it's clear to you okay uh, now so, so instead of bank yeah, uh, we don't yeah. we don't write cash no no because the cash account and the bank accounts these are separate ones for example if you have some money in your wallet right you have some money in your wallet and then at the same time you have the money in your bank as well your cash in the wallet is separate from what you have into the bank right okay yeah yeah okay Got technically it. speaking they are the separate ones na huh? okay yes so that's why although the wallet the cash is an asset no doubt the bank your bank balance is your asset no doubt but these are two different categories these are two different all the both are the current assets no doubt but this is individual separate asset this is individual separate asset right i mean if you have the cash with you hard cash with you that is your separate uh, that is your separate asset if you have the plastic money or you have your bank account that is your separate asset a person can have the multiple bank accounts as well right it can be a case there where 
the person is having the multiple bank accounts or a business normally talking about the businesses normally they have at least five to six different bank accounts that they are they are maintaining at the same time so if we are talking about the check we have received we are not going to debit the cash but we are going to debit the bank because bank is a separate asset right now uh, another one good sold for cash now we have sold the goods for cash what has happened in this transaction again what has happened we have sold the goods and uh, by selling the goods we have received the cash this cash we did not had before now we have got the cash our cash balance has increased cash is an asset so increase in asset is going to be debit so we are going to debit the cash because this is increase in asset and as we have sold the goods by selling the goods we have earned the income right by selling the goods we have earned the income so technically sales are going to be credited as an increase in income this is going to be credited as an increase in income then the next one this is an interesting one and uh, this is goods purchased by us return to supplier h hardy now this is interesting and how it's interesting goods purchased by us we had purchased the goods now return to supplier h hardy we have returned the goods right the goods that we bought we have returned it now for the beginners like you know into what do i always say that whatever transaction you have in front of you for the sake of the double entry and all the very first thing which we always do is to understand that what has been done into the double entry the very first thing which we have to understand is what has been done into the double entry sorry into the transaction i'm sorry what has been done into the transaction uh just just hold on for a second please okay so now, now over here we have seen that goods purchased by us return to supply hrd so as i said that for the beginners what i always encourage and what i always say in order to solve this transaction in order to pass liability for this transaction you have to understand the whole transaction and go by a step by step like you know approach first thing first let's see goods purchased by us what is the double entry that we are going to pass when we had purchased or when we would have had purchased the goods from the hrd goods purchased by us what could have what could be the double entry that would have been passed by them when we purchase the goods what's the double entry that we are going to pass we would have debited the purchase and we would have credited hrd right the purchase would have been recorded as a increase in expense and hrd recorded as a increase in liability this is the double entry which would have been passed right i mean there's no doubt about it mm -hmm. the purchase would have been debited hrd would have been credited done now this statement is saying goods purchased by us this whole thing which done by us 
is now returned to supplier H Hardy. We have returned these goods. What has happened? First, we got the goods. Now we have returned the goods. What has happened? Whatever we bought, we returned it. Whatever we did, we returned it. Technically, what is happening? Whatever the entry we passed is reversed now. Whatever entry we have passed is going to be reversed now. It is going to be reversed because the normal procedure has been uh, like you know reversed. Whatever we bought is now returned, is reversed. So we are simply going to reverse the double entry. And how it is going to be reversed? We are going to write HRD debit and purchase return credit. Now this is a new word. Purchase return is going to be credited. HRD is going to be debited because of decrease in liability. Purchase return decrease in expense. And look here, the table. Whenever the liability is decreased, it's debited. HRD is a liability, decrease in liability. Whenever the expense is decreased, it's credited. So technically, we have the purchase return as a decrease in expense. This is the uh, like you know actual double entry. This is required over here. And talking about why the HRD is debited as a decrease in liability, because at first we bought the goods on credit. We had to pay him. We bought the goods on credit from him. We had to pay him. But eventually, what happened? We returned the goods. Now, rather than paying off, we have returned the goods. So technically, whatever amount that we had to pay him is now not going to be paid. Whatever amount, so technically, our we bought the goods, we had incurred an expense. Buying the goods, we had incurred an expense. Returning the goods, we have decreased our expense. Simple, right? I mean, whatever you buy from the grocery store, you incur an expense. And if few items that you get, you go back to the store and you return those items, what happens? Your expense decreases. Simple rule of thumb, right? This is the double entry game that you have to keep in your mind. Then we have, let me, uh, okay, let me just copy it down because now we are, Okay. Machinery sold for cash. Another interesting, uh, like you know, transaction with us. And this is machinery sold for cash. You have sold a uh, machinery. Machinery that has been used into the business to generate the economic benefits. An asset has been sold now and you sold it for the cash. Now, what will happen? When you sell the machinery, you got the cash. Cash is an asset. Obviously, when you got the cash, your ba cash balance increased, your cash increased. So increase in asset is going to be debited because this is an increase in asset. And then you sold off your machinery. A non-current asset has been disposed of. So we are now going to have the machinery as a credit, not the sales. Machinery was not the goods. So we are not going to do anything with the sales. Machinery was a non-current asset. When a non-current asset is bought, we debit the non-current asset. When the non-current asset is sold, we credit that respective non-current asset. For now, for now, just for the sake of understanding, we credit that particular non-current asset which is being sold. That, and this is going to be a decrease in asset. So when we sold the machinery for cash, we are going to debit the cash. 
when the uh, like you know we uh, dispose of the uh, like you know the non-current asset that is going to be uh, like you know called as a decrease in asset, right? Whenever we uh, like you know dispose of the asset, we get the cash. We are going to increase our cash balance. We are going to increase one of the asset. And when whenever we are like you know at the same time when we are disposing it off for something, obviously the machinery, the non-current asset itself is decreased, so it is going to be credited. Then we have now another uh, interesting one as well, and this is goods sold returned to us by customer J Nelson. We have sold the goods, and uh, these are now returned to us by a customer J Nelson. Okay, I just need a second only. Okay. Good sold returned to us by customer Jane Nelson. We have, like, you know, uh, we sold the goods to a customer Jane Nelson, and uh, that customer has now returned the goods to us. Now, this transaction, if you look over here, we had sold some goods which are now being returned to us now. What's the best way and what's the possible, uh, like, you know, best scenario to solve such a double entry or to solve such a uh, basically like you know transaction what's the best way the best way is go with the flow how first three goods sold by us to customer j nelson what's the double entry uh, that we are going to pass or we are going to do when we would have had made the sale that is we would have done the en double entry as j nelson debit and sales credit. Why? Because J. Nelson was increasing asset. Sales were increasing income, right? Now, this customer has returned the goods to us. What will happen? It has been reversed. It has been reversed. So double entry is going to be reversed as well. We are going to write sales return, not the sales. We are going to write the sales return. Sales return are going to debit, and J. Nelson is going to be credited. Sales return are going to be debited because of decrease in income, and J. Nelson is going to be credited because of decrease in asset. Why? Sales return as a decrease in income because whatever we had earned is now like you know decreasing again because the customer has returned the goods so whatever sales we had like you know got are kind of like you know reversed so we are not going to get the income now so it is decreasing income so it is going to be uh, debited and jay nelson we had to receive the asset we have to receive the cash from him which we are not going to receive anymore so this is going to be called as a decrease in asset done Yes. Okay, moving ahead from here, moving ahead from here, we had goods bought on credit from D. Simpson. Now we have another one, and that is goods bought on credit from D. Simpson. We have bought the goods from uh, like, you know, D. Simpson. So technically speaking, when we have bought the goods, when we have bought the goods uh, on credit from D. Simpson, what's the double entry that we are going to do? Technically, when we buy the goods, we have incurred an expense 
and when we have incurred an expense that is going to be uh, like you know called as a purchase and we are going to pass the entry that as purchase debit and j oh, sorry this is d simpson d simpson credit purchase are going to be debited as a increase in expense d simpson is going to be credited as a increase in liability and then we have goods we return to h forms goods we return to h forms now understand this transaction happened we are returning the goods to h forms why we are returning because we didn't like it simple okay fine we didn't like it that's why we are returning but again before this what would have had happened we are returning because we technically bought the goods from H Forbes. That is why we are returning because we return to H Forbes. We return to H Forbes. We are the one who is returning, right? So if we are the one who is returning, now what will happen? Or what is basically happening? We are returning the goods, right? So technically, if we are returning, so what would have been had done that we would have bought the goods from the H forms at the very first place, right? So we are going to pass the double entry, purchase debit, H forms credit, purchase is debited as a increase in expense, H forms is credited as a increase in liability. Now we have returned, so H forms debited, purchase, return credit this is decrease in liability this is decrease in expense done so this is the double entry by which we are passing over here so this is the whole of uh, the exercise a that we had with us which we have done so far. If you have anything to ask, anything to add, you can. Otherwise, we can move forward. No, it's fine, no. Okay, good. Now let's just see this exercise number two. Okay. Let's have this exercise two here. Okay, this is goods bought on credit from T Morgan. The very first is goods bought on credit from T Morgan. Now, how about if you try to solve this uh, double entry? Mm -hmm. uh, it's goods returned to us. No, no, it's it's goods bought. This one, this one. I've just like you know uh, cut and pasted over here. This is the B1. This is not this one, but this A1. Goods bought on credit from T Morgan. This is the one you have to solve. Okay, uh, so goods bought on credit is an increase in liability. Uh, and then uh, it is, uh, and I think say goods, uh, goods bought, it is an increase in expense. Yes, it is an increase in expense. So what's going to be the double entry? So it's going to be debit expense, uh, yeah. expenses, and then it's going to be um, it's going to to be credit uh, T Morgan. Very good, very good. You are a fast learner. You are a quick learner. I'm happy. The purchase is going to be debited because this is an increase in expense. Very good. T Morgan is going to be credited because this is an increase in liability. Very good. This entry is totally right. And uh, now we have the B1 over here, and this is uh, goods returned to us by J. Thomas. Goods returned to us by J. Thomas. Now, J. Thomas has returned the goods to us. 
Now, what could have been done over here or what could have been the double entry over here? Yeah. So, Any uh, idea? so, so yes, so originally it would have been uh, increasing sales. So, yeah. Uh, so, and then it's uh, increasing sales, and then it's going to be uh, debit uh, Thomas because uh, we sold the goods to him, increasing asset for him. Mm -hmm. and Very good. So, we have to reverse it now. We have to reverse it now. So, simple reverse will be sales return debit and J Thomas credit, right? Mm -hmm. Sales return is going to be debit and J Thomas is going to be credit. Sales return is going to be debit because this is going to be a decrease in income and this is decrease in asset. Done? Mm -hmm. And then we have now machinery return to L. Jones, we have returned the machinery now. We bought the machinery, now we have returned the machinery. Now what will happen? When we have bought the machinery, we would have passed double entry as machinery debit, L. Jones credit. Now we have returned the machinery, so we are going to debit the L. Jones and we are going to credit the machinery. machinery. Yeah. yeah. L. Jones is going to dab it because this is decrease in liability. Machinery is going to dab it credit because this is a decrease in asset. asset. Done? Yes. Then we have goods bought for cash. We bought the goods for cash. The entry is going to be purchase dab it and cash credit. Why purchase debit? Because this is an increase in expense. expense. Cash and is decreasing cash. Decrease in asset. Yeah, decrease in cash, decrease in asset. Then we have one bought on credit from D Davis. So this is going to be one debit. D Davis is going to be credited. Why? Because one Increase in asset, D Davis is increase in liability. Increase in liability. Mm -hmm. Then we have goods returned by us to IPRIS. We have returned the goods. Why we have returned? Because we would have bought. That's why now we have returned. So the entry is going to be I Prince Dabet. And purchase a return is going to credit. I press is going to debit because this is a decrease in liability. And this is decrease in expense. Then D Picton paid up his account by check. D Picton has paid up his account by check. This means we were supposed to receive the money from D. Pector, uh, either because we must have like you know sold some goods to him, so that's why he had to pay us. So he has paid us. So we are we have just received the check from him. Now what will happen when we receive the check? We are going to deposit it in the bank, and the balance of the bank is going to increase. Mm -hmm. So we so are going to debit the bank. Debit bank, yeah. And uh -huh. we're going to credit uh, D. Picton. D. Picton. Why bank debit? Because this is increase in asset and this is decrease in asset. Why D. Picton decrease in asset? Because we had to receive from him. We received from him. His account is clear. That asset is now closed. So that's why that is a decrease in asset. At the end of the day, no matter what, whatever double entry we are doing, we are at the end of the day following that particular table that we have had that you know talked about before. This is the simple rule we are following at the end of the day, right? This is the basic rule that we have to follow.
Now, moving ahead from uh, the dividend entry, we have this exercise number three, then we have this exercise number four, then we have this exercise number five, and exercise number six. Moving ahead from the double entry, now uh, talking about one thing, I just want to add up over here. Let's just add over here. Remember, we talked about financial accounting's definition that it is the recording, summarizing, and presentation of financial transaction. Remember this definition we read like you know, last time? We are kind of into, or we were kind of into this recording stage where we talked about accounting equation and double entry. Right, we talked about the accounting question. We talked about the double entry. This would, this is what basically comes in into the recording stage. Now we have the summarizing stage. Now we have the summarizing stage, and in the summarizing stage, we are going to have the first thing being called as the ledgers or the T accounts. The ledgers or the T accounts are basically the accounts that you prepare at the end of the day, uh, like, you know, in order to identify, in order to make, or in order to check that what is the overall, like, you know, happening in the business. And we kind of make the accounts at the end of the day. So as if I ask, that uh, like, look here, let, you, let me just go back to the Excel for a second. I mean, we have, let's just open sheet number one. Look, we have sold so many like, you know, uh, transactions over here, like from eight, 10 transactions, for example. Now, if I ask that, uh, Dan, tell me, assumingly we have written the amounts in front of each and every dividend entry, right? Now, Dan, if I ask, that what is the total amount of the purchases that we have done in this question? How are you going to identify? If I ask, what is the amount of the total purchases that we do or that we had as far as like, you know, this question is concerned, or I ask, what is the total amount of the purchase return that we had in this question? How are you going to identify? So How are you going to so huh? for the purchases, I'm going to sum all the purchases, all of them together. Yeah, for the purchases, you, you will have to sum up all the purchases and then for the sales, you will have to like, you know, sum up all of the sales, right? Mm -hmm. But now tell me, this is a simple basic question where we had like around five to seven of the transactions, right? Talking about a whole business where the business is working for 365 days, uh, uh, 365 days a year, 24 by seven, right? Now tell me if we have to total the sales in that case of every transitions we have to look at, is it possible for us to do? No. Um, Did you get my point? What I just said, let me repeat myself. Look, if I ask, from you that what is the total amount of the purchase in this question? What will you do? You will look at each and every one of the double entry. You will identify like where are the sales? What is the amount? And then you are going to total it one by one, right? This is mm -hmm. what you are going to do. Yes. This is the example where we have only around eight to 12 double entries. You are going to take at least around a minute or two to solve it, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is a small question. Talking about a practical business where the business is actually running 24 by 7, 365 days a year, they have millions of transactions with them, right? Now, talking about if I give you the task to calculate their sales just by looking at the double entries, it will be near to impossible for you to do that. Yeah, true. Technically, you will take around ages to, like, you know, solve the total sum of the sales in that case. 
because technically speaking this is going to be so much spread around you that it will be really very hard for you to do that right so in that case what do we do we make up the accounts we make up the accounts since from the day one so that whenever around in the middle of the year at the end of the quarter at the end of the year whatever point that i am standing at if i ask the darren tell me about the uh like you know amount of the sales that we have or something what you're going to do is you will should we go to the sales account you are going to open up that sales account and you are going to look at the balance and promptly within seconds you are going to tell me that what is the exact amount of sales so far that we have with us similarly looking at the accounts we can easily identify whatever things that we have with us right so that is why we are kind of now moving from the vast double entries to the summarizing stage of the accounts where we are going to talk about the accounts and these are basically the ledgers or the key accounts that we are going to look at let's just have a break of like around 3 4 minutes and then we are going to resume okay let's just have okay. a break i yeah. just i just need to settle one thing and then we are going to resume yeah okay no problem
Okay, I'm back. So let's just resume. And uh, let me just copy this big exercise over here, which we are going to use. Here we go. Okay, but before uh, talking about <clears throat> this one, let's just talk about the T accounts first. I'm just making the shape of a T account over here. This is the title of account over here. This is date and I have to Okay. So this is going to be date this is duration this is amount this is date duration amount this is the title of account the top head title of account means whatever the account that we have whatever the account we are going to make we are going to write the title for example if it's a cash account we are going to write cash account over here if it's a capital account we are right going to write the capital over here if it is the purchase account we are going to write the purchase account over here whatever the account title is we are going to write the name of the accounts at the top head or at the top of the T account. Then date is the date on which the transaction is taking place. The narration is we are going to write around a word or two about whatever the transaction is happening or is happened. Like maximum in a word or two, we are going to talk about it. We are going to write about it. Narration is you can write anything over here, right? Anything which explains or which gives you an idea about whatever amount you have written over here. This is going to be idea. This is going to be about the narration that you have, like, you know, which is going to explain that what this amount is actually, right? This is going to be narration. Even if you want to write the James Bond over here, you can. Even if you want to write the Catherine Zeta Jones or you want to write the Monica Bluji's name over here, you can write. I mean, I'm just giving you an example. Whatever you feel, you, you see fit, you feel fit, you can write it over here. Only thing which counts or which matters over here is you have to give an idea about the exact what has happened or what the amount is basically relating to, right? And then this is going to be the amount. Then moving ahead from here, remember, uh, this side, this whole, this whole side, this is going to be your uh, debit side. And this whole is going to be your credit side, right? Now we read about a narration that Mr. A started business with $10,000, right? We read about a statement that Mr. A started business with $10,000. The double entry for this was cash 10,000 and capital 10,000. Done. The double entry was cash 10,000 and capital 10,000. Done. Now, talking about the accounts, if we want to make the accounts over here, we don't have a cash account with us. We don't have a capital account with us. Now, what's going to be yeah, as far as the, like, you know, the account formation is concerned? So, we are 
going to make up the accounts. This is going to be the cash account, right? This is the amounts and this is going to be the capital account. Over here, we are going to write business started $10,000. In the capital, we are going to write business started. We can write amount invested. We can write cash invested or whatever if we want to write we can write any of the narrations because these are should be giving us the idea that what this 10,000 is right this is giving us the idea that what this 10,000 is then we are having sold goods for cash $300 we have sold the goods for cash $300 for this, the double entry is cash 300 and sales 300. For this, we have cash 300 and we have sales 300. Now look, we already have the cash account with us. We won't be making another cash account. We are going to simply write cash sales or sales on cash done. And we are going to write 300 over here. But again, we don't have a sales account with us because we have a cash account, we have a capital account. We don't have a sales account with us. So what we are going to do is we are simply going to create another account and this is going to be of the sales and we are going to report or we are going to write uh, for cash, on cash. Like see, I'm just writing for cash or on cash and I'm writing 300 over here. Now this is just straight away giving an idea or giving me an idea that the amount 300 which is written into the sales account is basically showing me that this 300 relates to the amount that I have sold the goods for cash over here. Then this is what the rule for the T account is. And one more thing, uh, the rule is whenever we are passing the double entry, we are simultaneously by the end of every transaction, we are going to make up a T account, whatever transaction we are doing or we are passing the level entry for, we are straight away going to make up a T account for it straight away. Then this is a simple rule that we have to follow over here. Now, moving ahead from here, we have these uh, like, you know, double entries with us. First one is, started business with $10,000 in the bank. We have started business, uh, like, you know, with $10,000 in the bank. Now, what is going to be double entry for that? We are going to debit the bank with 10,000 and we are going to credit the capital with 10,000. Now, this is the basic, uh, like, you know, double entry that we have over here so far. Then this is the double entry that we have here so far with us. Now, talking about the T account, this is whole space for the T accounts. We don't have any T account for the bank. We don't have any T account for the capital. What we are going to do is we are going to create our first T account and uh, this is going to be of bank account, right? This is going to be our bank account. And then we are going to have one here 
which is being called as the capital account. Over here, we are going to have the currency signs with us. This is going to be business started, 10,000. In the capital, we can write uh, cash invested, business started as well. If you want to write, you can write whatever you want to. Done. We have created one bank account and we have created one capital account with us. So this is what the double entry is going to be. And this is what the posting is going to be into the accounts. Then we have T Cooper lent us 400 in cash. T Cooper lent us, he has given us a loan and he has lent us 400 in cash. Now the double entry for this is going to be cash 400 and T Cooper loan account with 400. T Cooper is a liability because he has given us a loan. Eventually we have to repay him. So this is going to be like, you know, the loan for us and the cash which we have received. This is obviously an asset. So it is going to be an increase in asset. Now we have one bank account. We have one capital account. We don't have a cash account. We don't have a T Cooper account. So now what we are going to do is we are going to make up new accounts over here. Okay. And then we have one over here. So this is going to be a cash account. This is going to be three Cooper loan account. For every debit and credit, we have to see. Okay, now look here. In the cash account, we can write loan received, loan from Cooper, or loan only, we can write it. Loan from T Cooper. This is 400, loan in cash, 400. See, cash account is debited over here because the cash is debited into the debit entry. T Cooper account is credited over here because T Cooper is credited in the debit entry as well. So we have to make sure again that we are properly following the double entries as well. We are properly following the double entries over here as well. Let me just highlight this over here as well so that this is eye catching for us so that we don't miss anything. Next one, bought goods on credit from F. Johns and S. Charles for 840 and 3600. Bought goods on credit from F. Johns and S. Charles. What we can do is we can debit the purchase uh, and then we can credit the F Jones and S Charles over here separately, or we can pass one single entry for each, purchase to F Jones, purchase to S Charles, we can do that as well. So this is 840, this is 3600, and uh, 840 plus 3600, the total is triple four zero. So we have the total are triple four zero. Done. This is the double entry we have. Now look here. We don't have a purchase account. We don't have a F Jones or S Charles account. So what we are going to do is we are going to open up new accounts. And this is going to be Okay, so this is going to be purchase account and 
Then we have F Jones account as Charles account. Now we can write from F Jones. This is for age 40 from S Charles. 3600. Then in F Jones account, credit purchase 840. We have credit purchase triple four is oh, oh, triple four is was supposed to be over here. Okay. Okay. So see, we have made all separate accounts over here done then we have sold goods for cash 200 coming here we have sold goods for cash the double entry is going to be cash 200 and sales 200 now we already have a cash account with us but we don't have a sales account with us we already have a cash account but we don't have a sales account what we are going to do is we are going to write cash sale 200 over here. And then we are going to make up a new account. And that is obviously going to be of the sales. And uh, let's just write it over here. Okay. Now let me just copy these accounts because obviously we will have to be making a bit extra accounts. Okay. I'm just making up these extra accounts maybe because uh, in the coming entries, we might have to make a few accounts. So that's why I'm just copying pasting over here so that we are kind of saving our bit of time. Okay, for now, these accounts are enough. Okay, so we have passed the entry cash to sales. We have recorded the cash sale over here. Now let's just make a sales account over here. And this is, we can write for cash, and this is going to be 400. Done. And this is going to be highlighted over here as well. Okay. Then we have took 250 of the cash and paid it into the bank. Now look here. We took 250 out of the cash and we just paid it into the bank. Now, what's the double entry is going to be? We took the 250 of the cash from the cash and we deposited it into the bank. Double entry is going to be bank 250 cash 250. Now look here. We already have a bank account. We already have a cash account. The bank account is debited now. So we will go into the bank account and we are going to write cash deposit 250 we'll go to the cash account and we are going to write bank deposit 250 see a simple narration straight away telling us that this 250 is the one we have deposited the cash and this 250 here it is totally showing that we have deposited into the bank done this is the simple entry we have recorded. Then we have sold goods on credit to C Moody 180. We have sold the goods to C Moody on credit. The double entry for this is going to be C Moody debit with 180 and sales credit with 180. Because we have sold the goods to C Moody on credit, we have to receive the money from him. So technically, he is our asset. So that's why we have debited the C Moody and sales is income. So we have credited the sales over here. Now we have the sales account, but we don't have the C Moody account. So we are going to create a new account, C Moody's account. And we are going to write credit sales 180 into the sales account to C Moody. 180 look 
Sales are credited here, so we are crediting the sale. COD is debiting, debiting over here in the double entry, so we have debited his account by 180. That, the simple rule, double entry rule is following over here. Then we have sold goods on credit to J Newman 220. Now we have sold the goods to J Newman. The entry for this is going to be the Newman 220 and then sales 220. We have the sales account, but we don't have the J Newman account. So we are going to go over here and we are going to write J Newman account. And uh, we are going to write credit sales and the amount is 220. And then we have the sales account. We are going to write to J Newman 220. Done. We have the J Newman with us. So we have recorded this over here. Done. Then we have bought goods on credit from F. John 370. We have bought goods on credit from F. Jones. We have bought the goods now. So technically this is our purchase. So we are going to write purchase debit 370 and F. Jones credit 370. Now we have the purchase account. We have the F. Jones account. We have purchased further from the F. Jones. So we are going to write from F. Jones, the amount is 370. We have the F. Jones account over here. We are going to write credit purchase 370. The same accounts do exist, huh? So we, we, we don't have to make another account. We don't have to make another account. If the accounts are already existing, we are simply going to post in those accounts. Then we have C. Moody return goods to us 40. Now, C. Moody has returned goods to us. It means he has returned now. Nah? So technically, we must have sold him in the past. Look here. We had sold him 180 of the goods in the previous transaction. Now he has returning or he has returned uh, like, you know, the goods worth 40 back to us. Now, what is going to be the double entry? The double entry is going to be sales return debit with 40 and C Moody is going to be credited with 40. We have the C Moody's account, but we don't have the sales return account. So we are going to make a new account, sales return account. And we are going to write from C Moody 40 over here. We are going to go to the C Moody's account. We are going to write return 40 over here. Now, we had the sales account, but we did not have had the sales return account, and we have opened a new account as the sales return, but we have not posted to, now look here, see sales return is debited by mistake. I've written it to the uh, credit side. I'm taking it back to the debit side because this is going to be debited over here, right? So this is the thing you have to keep in mind while doing the double entry that you are posting into the correct account. Now, I was saying that we already have, or we have the sales account, but we created a new account with the sales return. Why not to post into the sales account? Why to create a new sales return account? I mean, if you look at the double entry, the sales are simply going to be debited now. So we could have like, you know, debited in the sales over here. Why to have a separate account? Now, when we ask why to have the separate account, the answer is basically given to us by the IAS1, International Accounting Standard Number One, that is the presentation of financial statements, which tells us, which orders us, which compels us to have this information separate for the user of the financial statement. So as to get an idea about the business that what is the total sales you made? And from those total sales, what is the amount that was actually being returned? Just for the sake of the presentation, just for the sake of the idea of the business or how the business is doing, we are segregating between the sales and the sales return. 
although the net effect is same the net sales are always going to be the same obviously like you know by writing into the sales account rather than like you know writing them separately because if you talk about the net sales obviously the sales return are going to be deducted from the sales but it just give an idea about the business that how much the business sold and how much was the return in order to get an idea about the operations of the business so that's why we keep the sales and sales return separately done and then uh, we have yeah uh, do we have Any to question? know the rules of the ias standards which you just mentioned by heart what are the the ias standards uh there are certain rules we we are going to study about some standards as well we are going to study about some standards but obviously the rules such rules which i'm telling you over here these are not the ones that you have to learn by heart but technically speaking these are the ones that you are going to learn on the way during the course of the paper and we have to apply those rules obviously as far as the definitions are concerned like the asset expense income liability capital which we have learned these definitions are also given in the ias1 as well that what's an asset what's an expense i mean talking about like you know if i write a currency sign over here if i have created this t account over here obviously this whole working is backed by an accounting standard this whole working this whatsoever things we are doing even the way i have passed the double entry there are certain accounting standards which are backing it up but obviously this is the start of the accounting this is the start where we are kind of learning about the accounting now so we are not going to go for in depth analysis of the accounting standards for now but obviously during the course we will be studying about the accounting standards okay i will be the one who will be telling you about what do you have to learn from the accounting standard okay uh can you hear me properly yeah it just it just got disconnected now it's fine okay basically uh like you know the electricity at my place just went off and uh basically the wifi router which i have upstairs is not connected to the backup of the uh with the backup electricity thing over here na so that's why i'm just using the wifi from the ground floor so it just like you know kind of switched itself so if if in between uh if you are unable to hear me properly or something straight away do let me know so that i can switch it to my mobile data as well i can switch that as well if during the course you find or during the class if you find that i'm kind of breaking up extra or you are unable to hear me properly or something do let me know okay yeah yeah it's fine now okay 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 now we have another we have another transaction that is sold goods on credit to h morgan and j peet now let's just see over here regarding this transaction we have sold goods to h morgan and j peet we have h morgan with 190 we have j peet with 370 and then we are going to credit the sales with the sum of these amount and this is 190 plus 370 we have 560 okay so now if we look over here we don't have an h morgan or we don't have a j peet with us but we have a sales account as well so what we are going to do is we are going to create two new accounts j morgan and the peet one h morgan okay this is h morgan this is the h morgan account then i have j peet account okay 
Now I've made the sales, so I'm going to write sales or sale on credit with the age Morgan of 190. And then I'm going to write credit sales or credit sale. And uh, this is of 370. And then I'm going to go to the sales account and I'm going to write to H Morgan 190 to J Pete 370. Done. We have the new accounts, the H Morgan and the J Pete with us as well. Okay. Moving ahead from here, now we have we return goods to F Jones. We return goods to F Jones. Uh, hold on for a second, please. Okay, so I was talking about we return goods to F. Jones. Now we have returned the goods. Okay, now we have returned the goods to F. Jones. So technically, we must have bought the goods from F. Jones. Look here. So that's why we are now kind of returning 140 of those. So we are going to write F. Jones debit 140 and purchase a return credit with 140. We have the F Jones account with us. Here it is. We are going to write purchase return. And uh, this is 140. Now we don't have a purchase return account. So we are going to make a new account. Purchase return account. And this is purchase return. See, it is credited over here. So I will just go to the credit side and I will write, uh, we, we, we return now. So I'm going to write two F Johns 140. We return the goods. So we are simply going to credit it. Then we have bought one on credit from Manchester 20. 600 we have bought the van now so we are going to pass a new entry and that is van debit 2600 and then we have manchester motors with 2600 now we don't have a van account we don't have a manchester motor account so we are going to have a van account over here and Van from man or van bar we can write or van from Manchester we can write and this is for twenty six hundred then we are going to go for Manchester Motors account and we are going to write van on credit. 600. Okay, then we have bought office furniture on credit from Foster Supplies. We have bought the furniture. We are going to write furniture account 
with 600, then process supplies with 600. So we have going to have a new account, furniture account. Then we are going to have foster supplies account. And for this, we are going to write from foster furniture on credit 600. Done. I'm again in every T account making sure that I am following the rule of the double entry and that is simply of the debit and the credit that I am following over here. This is the simple rule of the double entry which I am following over here. Done. This is again and again, I'm telling that you have to follow as far as uh, the rules of the double entry are concerned. As far as the rules of the double entry are concerned and uh, this is something you have to make sure that you are following religiously. Then we return goes to S charge. Now we have returned the goods to S charge. This is what we are now going to pass and check. Okay, <clears throat> we return goods. It means we must have bought. So that's why we have returned the goods. So we are going to pass the entry as S. Charles debit and purchase a return credit with oh, oh, 110, 110. Okay. And we have the S Charles account with us. Here it is. Words return 110 and then we have the purchase return account with us we have to see here we go 2s charles 110 done we have recorded this double entry with us then we have bought goods for cash 220 Now, bought goods for cash, the double entry is going to be purchase 220, cash 220. We have the cash account, we have the purchase account, we are going to write cash purchase 20. Yeah, and uh, then we have the purchase account with us as well. And cash to 20 done i've recorded this in the cash i've recorded this in the purchase as well then we have goods sold for cash 70. now i have sold the goods and uh, for this the double entry is going to be cash 70 sales 70. we have the cash account we are going to write cash sale 70 sales account for cash 70. then we have paid money owing to f jones by check 1070 <clears throat> this is paid money owing to f jones by check we have paid the money to f jones that we were supposed to pay and this is 1070 so the debit entry is going to be F Jones 1070 and bank credit with 1070 because we have paid the money by check now. So our bank account will decrease. Now we have both accounts with us. First of all, we'll go to the F Jones account. Here we go. F Jones is debited. We are going to write check paid and the amount is 1070. And then we are going to go to the bank account, paid to F. Jones, 1070. Done. 
then we have paid okay we have got this paid money to f joins um, okay this one's recorded then goods returned to us by h morgan now h morgan has returned some of the goods to us and we are going to pass this double entry now if he has returned to us so it means we must have sold him na? so that's why he returned the goods to us he sold the goods to us which we have just returned so uh sorry which he has returned to us sorry we sold the goods to him he has returned the goods to us so technically speaking what will happen now is this is going to be called as a sales return so sales return is going to be debited with 30 and h morgan is going to be credited with the 30. done so we are going to have the entry as h morgan dab uh, sorry h morgan credit and sales return debit now we have the sales return account here we go we have this from h morgan amount is 30 yep and then we have the h morgan account with us we are going to write returned 30. okay then moving out from here i returned some of the office furniture costing 160 to faster supplies we have returned office furniture okay now this is an interesting one this is the talk of the like you know a non-current asset in the sales or in the purchase when we are talking about the context of the goods we have a simple rule of thumb that if it's a sales return if it's a purchase return we have to create a new separate account but when it comes towards a non-current asset when it comes towards a non-current asset we don't create a new account for the returns, right? We post it to the same non-current account, so same non-current asset account. So if we have returned some of the furniture to faster supplies, we are going to pass debit entry, faster supplies debit with 160, furniture credit with 160. So we have both of these accounts with us, return 160, return 160 i'm just writing that return return because both of these return are should be showing me into the accounts into the relevant accounts that what what this 160 is relating to then e sangster put a further 500 into the business in the form of cash e sangster is basically the owner of the business right he is the owner of the business look here enter the following transactions in the accounts of e sangster so is the he is the owner of the business so what he's done that he has introduced a further 500 as a capital into the business so the entry is going to be cash 500 and capital introduced is 500 so we we'll go over here into the cash account and we are going to write capital introduced capital injected whatever you want to write capital injected or we can write cash injected 500 done then we have paid manchester motors 2600 by check we have paid manchester motors by check so we have manchester motors 2600 and then we have bank 2600 we have manchester motors and then we have bank with us we have paid to it we'll go over here and we'll write 
check paid and then we'll go to the bank paid to manchester 2600 and then we have bought office furniture for cash 100 we are going to write furniture 100 cash 100 for cash 100 for nature for 100 done so finally these are the all the different trees that we had and look here we have like you know recorded each and everything into the accounts mm -hmm. now <clears throat> yeah i have one question uh could you go to the manchester account please yeah sure mm -hmm. yeah i think it's to your right yeah uh manchester motors so you see uh here you put uh debit 2600 so we are debiting because of uh, the expense to the Manchester Motors? No, because this was a liability. We paid off our liability. It's a decrease in liability because we paid off our liability. So that's why it is debiting over here. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Clear? Yes. Okay. Now, the step ahead, moving from the T accounts, what do we have to do is now we have to balance off the t accounts we have to balance off the t accounts at the end of the accounting period now talking about the balance of the t accounts have you seen uh, the weighing scale the old weighing scales by any chance uh, no <laughs> okay uh, the weighing scales are were like you know were, are, are kind of like you know made up of the old weighing scale, non-electric ones, where you put in the weight on one side and then you fill the other side with whatever commodity that you are getting. For example, if you are going to an old, uh, old, uh, old store and you ask for one kg or one pound of sugar, so what the guy do, he has a stone, a metric stone for the one kg, the standard weight. He puts it on one side and on the other side, he keeps on filling the sugar till it's equal to the one kg, till the scale basically weighs, right? Or like in the movies, uh, like, you know, talking about the scene of the court where you must have seen, like, you know, the lady in the court, like, you know, having a scale, uh, like, you know, in her hand, the statue, basically showing the justice where they kind of balance off everything, right? So this is kind of a scale. Or for example, if you're in your childhood, like, you know, when we used to go to the chemistry lab or something, we used to like, you know, balance all the things like on a weighing scale or something. This is a common thing. I mean, you can Google it as well. If you have not seen, uh, you, can, you can find it onto the Google as well and you can get an idea about that, okay? So this is kind of like sort of a weighing scale. Let me, let me just check for a second for you because uh, the concept which I want to give is really very crucial over here. And let me just check the, fig, uh, the picture for the weighing scale if I find any. Just give me a second. Okay, let me just share my Chrome over here. See, <clears throat> like if you can see over here, this is the old weighing scale. These are the weights, like different of standard weights, you can say like of 100 gram, 200 gram, 500 grams, and one kg, two kg. These are the stones, weighing stones that you have. So what happens? And on the other side, you keep on filling the stuff. Right, and when it balances, it says, or it basically shows that the commodity which you just filled on the other side is now equal to that. What the weighing scale is, right? You can have 
like you know the number of uh, the shapes and the examples over here of the wing scale. That this is what I was talking about. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay. 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 That so this is this is what I was kind of like you know telling you about. Okay, moving back. Now this is sort of a weighing scale. And what do we have to do is we cannot delete whatever amount is written on one, one side. We have to balance off the other side with the equivalent one. For example, if I talk about this bank account, this has to balance. For example, if I look here, the sum of this is uh, 10 to 50. So this side is supposed to be 10 to 50 as well. If this one side is at 10 to 50, this second side has to be at 10 to 50 as well. So I have to put some balance over because I already have 26 here. I already have 0, 7, 0 at over here as well. But I need to have it at 10 to 50. So what is the amount that I'm going to put in as a balance over here for it to balance? And that is going to be this minus this minus this that is 6580. I have 1070 over here, I have 2600 over here. If I put additional 6580 over here, then the balance is equal to 10 to 50. This is one way of balancing this T account. Now, look at the other way. We had a total inflow of 10,250 into the bank account. We started off with the $10,000. Then we had a cash deposit of the 250 into the bank. We had a total of 10,250 with us, right? We, from this 10,250, we paid off F. Jones by 1,070. We paid to the Manchester Motors 2,600 from this 10,250. And now this is the balance of cash we have left into the bank account. This is the balance of cash we have left into the bank account, right? So these are the two different ways by which you can see at the accounts. For example, like if I look over here, I have this at 10,500. Technically speaking, this has to be 10,500. So what's the balance that should be put in over here? This should be 10,500. If I look at the cash account, Right, if I look at the cash account, I have a balance of 1170, which should be over here as well. So what is the balance that I should put in? That is 1170 minus 100 minus 220 minus 250, I get 600. The other way around is I had a total cash of 1170 from this i deposited 250 in the bank i made a cash purchase of 220 i bought the furniture for cash for 100 and now i am left with the 600 of the cash with me that the other way around that the story as well okay so can i say that i have a debit balance yeah yeah this is the debit this is the thing I was about to say after, like, you know, balancing accounts. We do name these, like, you know, uh, accounts with the debit or the credit balances. You wait for a while till I'm done with balancing these accounts. Okay. So I know now that you have got this. So I'll be kind of a bit in a speed regarding balancing of these accounts. And then I have. Now for the F Jones, we have the sum of one, two, one, zero. I should have this balance over here of one, two, one, zero. For this, I need to put this minus this minus this zero. See, the F Jones account is balanced off. We don't have any balance over here. 
because whatever we bought, we return some and then the balancing amount is paid by check. So there's no balance over here. And then for the S Charles, we had triple four zero here, triple four zero here, and the balance is triple four zero. Okay, then for the sales, we have the sum at this. This is this, and then we have the balance at one four three zero. Then this is one eighty. I should have one eighty here. This is the balance one eighty. Then I have the balance at two twenty. Then the JP, this is at 370, this is at 370, this is the balance at 370. Then we have the H Morgan's account by 190, 190, and the balance is going to be of 160. Then down. This is going to be 70, this is going 70, and the balance is going to be 70. So this is going to be the sum of these two, 250, and the balance is going to be 250. Then I should have 2600, 2600, 2600 is going to be the balance over here. Okay. Then this is 2600, 2600, and we don't have a balance here. And then we have this is 700, this is 700, and then we have a balance of 700 minus this 540. And then we have 600 here, 600 here, and we have the balance over here as 600 minus one, six years, 440. Okay, so we have balanced off each and every account over here. And these are the ones that we have for now. Now talking about what balance is to be called what? Technically speaking, uh, if I look at the bank account, if I look at the bank account, this balance is coming over here because of which side? This 6580 balance is coming over here because of which side? Of the debit side. The debit side is bigger. Of the debit side. Exactly. Because the debit side is big. So that's why it is called a debit balance. This balance on the other hand is coming because of the credit side. So this is called credit balance. Now, one thing, I mean, if we want to go for the concept, we can have this concept like this. Otherwise, we have read about the double entries. I'm erasing these from here, just to like, you know, write my concept, what I want to tell. We have talked about the outcome of the transaction as far as the double entry is concerned. And uh, we have learned one thing, asset and expense. When they are increased, they have what balance? When the asset and expenses increase, what balance do they have? By what, like, you know, doing the double entry, how do we increase them? Debit. 
exactly they have the debit balance on the other hand income liability capital they are always going to have a credit balance now cash asset debit balance t cooper liability credit balance then then we have purchase expense we are going to have debit balance f jones no balance s charles we got the goods and credit so this is going to be credit balance then and then we have the sales account is income so this is going to be credit balance c woody we sold the goods this is asset Debit balance. H Morgan. Debit balance. I will. Purchase return. Decrease in expense. Debit balance done. So we have to balance this by the way of the category and because of the side as well. Now, second and okay, okay, okay. I Let me just switch my internet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope you are able to hear me now. Yeah, better. Okay. Now. One more last thing over here into the concept of this, and that is remember one thing the expense, the income, they are always been made or they're always there for a specific period. As that period ends, the expense and income of that period ends. But as far as the liability, asset and capital is concerned they are always on to a roll on basis for example like uh, this is the month of april right this is the month of april at the start of the april you got your salary you got your income from the office right that was your income and then for the month of april on the way, you have been spending like, you know, on your expenses as well, right? You have been spending on your expenses as well. Now, like after five days, the month of April will be over, right? The month of April is going to be over. So technically speaking, your income, your expenses for the month of April are going to over as well. Then as soon as the May starts, you are are going to get your income again and for the like you know uh 
for the month of May, you are again going to have your new expenses, right? You are going to again have your expenses. So technically speaking, new period, new era, new expenses, new income. As the period ends, zero expense, like as the period ends, the expense ends, the income ends, right? One thing. Now, the second one. If you have a car, like you said, you have a Honda, like as the April ends and the May starts, you still have the Honda. The amount of cash that you have in your wallet or in your bank account, you still have that as well. Like it doesn't matter if the month ends, the year ends, whatever assets that you have, you still have them. Similarly, if you have taken out a loan from the bank and the month ends or the period ends, the loan is still outstanding. You still have to pay. That is still going to be your liability, right? With the period end, the loan doesn't end. The liability doesn't end. It still says the same. It still says the same. So what we are learning that the expense and income will have closing balances, assets, liabilities, and capital will have carried down or carry forward balances. Assets, liabilities, and cap capitals will have a carry down or a carry forward balance. Done. This is what we have learned now. So technically, if it is a bank, this is going to be a balance carried down. C slash D is shown for the carry down balance. This one, capital, this is going to be balance carried down. Cash asset balance carry down. T coupon loan liability carry down. Then we have the purchase. This is an expense and this is going to be a closing balance. F Jones zero balance. Then we have S Charles. We have purchase. This is going to be balance carried down. Done. And then we have the sales. This is income. This is going to be a closing balance. Done. C Moody. We have uh, sold the goods to him. So this is going to be balance carried down. This is J Newman. This is going to be a balance carried down. This is sales return. This is decrease in income. Technically, this is going to have a closing balance. H Morgan, we sold the goods, so this is going to be a balance carried down. Then we have the JP. This is going to be a balance carried down. Then we have the Manchester Motors, the balance ends. This is a van, this is an asset. This is going to have a balance carried down. Purchase return. This is going to be a closing balance. This is furniture. Balance carried down. This is fossil supplies. This is our liability. Balance carried down. And done. So these are all the stuff that we have for now. Now, what we have learned today, the T accounts, the debit credit balance thingy, along with the closing or the carry down balance, right? Now, what do we have to do is, um, okay, this is the exercise number five, which we have done. Now the homework is, you have this exercise number six in front of you. you you have to solve this, uh, like, you know, the whole exercise with the double entries and the T accounts, you have to balance them off. And then you have to write either it's a debit or credit balance or either it's a closing or carry on balance. This is the homework for you for the week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This exercise number six, 
along with that accounting equation question you have to do. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, I'll do, yeah, sure. Okay, so this is all from my side for today. We have kind of like, you know, take up, taken up an extra time as well. But again, uh, this is something which I wanted to complete. I didn't want to like, you know, leave it in between. Mm -hmm. Because uh, by this, at least you will be able to like you know have some healthy practice kind of thing you know at your end. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have one. I have one last question. Uh, can yeah, I ask yeah, one question? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, so this book of the accounts you call it as a ledger. Yeah. Ledger is basically the T accounts when we are kind of like you know making these accounts into a kind of sort of a rough format. We call it as a T accounts. But if you prop, if you put in the proper dates along with the folio, along with the reference numbers, they are called the ledgers. This is the only difference. Okay. Like if I put in a, like, you know, date column over here, if I put a folio or something over here, like, you know, in the same T account, it is going to be called as a ledger. Ledger and T accounts, they are interchangeably the words which we are being called, like, you know, called. But technically difference is when we properly make up a T account, it is going to be called as a ledger, right? Otherwise it's a T account. But again, there is no difference between them. They are all the same. They are the same. But if you properly make up a T account with the date, the folio number, the reference number, each and everything, then that is called as a ledger. And uh, if we kind of like, you know, make these like, you know, uh, if we make these accounts like this, then they are going to be called as the T accounts. But these are the ledgers again. Okay, this is the technical difference which I'm telling. Otherwise, you can name them the like, you know, the ledgers or you can name them the tea accounts whatever you want to they are the both the same mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you no problems no problems anything else no no that's fine i uh, have some homework now <laughs> okay, okay okay so uh this is all from my side for today take very good care of yourself and your yeah. family and the friends around yourself and enjoy the week ahead of you as well but please this time and this weekend at least make sure that your work is done and the homework is completed okay yeah, and okay, so. uh, if you have any question regarding like, you know, the double entry or something like, you know, I mean, while, while doing the practice and if you kind of find yourself into a difficult situation where you don't know how to pass the double entry or how to do the accounting equation, you are more than welcome to like, you know, message me on through WhatsApp and I'll be more than happy to assist you and help you over there. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. No problem. Okay. Then take care. Bye. Yeah. Uh, enjoy your week as well. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.